Even when we're dead, we have to worry about the schmegual violence from men. Did you see this? This just happened. Before I get into that, like, I swear, y'all, y'all are, <laughs> y'all are killing me. How is I gonna do like a chill day, my own personal story? And I get a lot of requests that people send me things all the time. And several people sent me that and because I can't help myself, I went down a rabbit hole and oh my God. I'm gonna t connect a lot of dots here, so bear with me. It's really disturbing reading all these articles. So massive trigger warning, by the way, if you're not in the right place to w watch this, don't. But I, I'm using this as an example of why, among the countless reasons, why women don't trust men. Why women should stop believing that we're ever gonna hit a wall? Like all these red pill dudes say, oh, no one's gonna want you. Even old ladies, like elderly, like 80, 90 year old women still get great. Even dead women get great. Women will never ever have a hard time getting laid it has never been a problem for us. That never will be a problem for us. The problem for us is making sure that we don't get graped or our head chopped off anytime we deal with men. And even if our literal head is chopped off, they will still assault us. I'm not even exaggerating. Just, God. This is why dealing with men is the most terrifying thing women do. Women, femmes, trans women, non-binary, you know, like anyone who has to deal with the violence, the schmegual violence of men understands why we are constantly scared. And also as a white woman, I have way more protection systemically under the law and all that stuff than any of my peers that are black, indigenous, or any other woman of color. But as a collective, we're never safe. And you know, there's been plenty of videos on TikTok for a while talking about how men are not hired at morgues very much anymore for this reason. But it's not just mortician, it's security guards, it's janitors, it's like, Men who have keys to rooms in any building where there are vulnerable women, dead or alive. This dude was literally, the only thing he was supposed to do is maybe, you know, push, push the bodies, not open the bags, not touch them. And he got busted by two coworkers. He was sweating profusely, acting all nervous. His duty belt was gone, zipper was open, and, uh, you know, looked messy. Oh, God. I This is so triggering. I'm sorry, y'all. The, the the bag was unzipped and she was facing down, which is not how the bodies are supposed to be kept in the freezer. Are you surprised this is what he looks like? I'm not. Of course he tried to claim, oh, I fell and eh. No. When I was researching this story, this is what I keep seeing. This, having schmegs with, having schmegs with. It is 2023. How can a dead body have schmegs? And uh, upon doing this research, I found this is like hap has happened a lot. And this is what they always say. Had schmegs. 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 Huffington Post. What? You are literally a feminist mag like publication. Schmeg. Even in France. This is a French publication. Relation se sexuelle. No, those were not schmegual relations. Speaking of which, uh, I I'm going to get back to the point. Uh, in my French tutoring session the other day, Y'all, you know, I'm so, I, I'm always talking about like dark stuff. I can't help it. And somehow I mentioned like, <laughs> and my French teacher, who's a feminist and she's amazing, she told me that in France they actually don't call it, <laughs> they call it, I know, criminality. This is the word in French. They've started changing the language for a reason because this term right here refers to the attraction and love towards heaven. That's the root is like involves love and attraction. And they're like, yeah, we should, that's not, there's no love involved in this. So they changed the phrasing. I hope in the US and, or in English journals and the dictionary, even we start using that word because that's what it is. Words matter. Every time there's an article about a man schmegly assaulting or graping a corpse. Don't you dare say they were having schmegs. This is one reason why we're living in this hellhole is the ongoing indoctrination of women's real pain and torture and trauma and the violence against us and our bodies being softened.
Now, before I get into any of the darker stuff, this article in Fortune Magazine talks about why funeral homes are going to start be running more and more by women. Despite the fact that women have been left out for a really long time, let me know if you want to know the history of this because of course it's rooted in uh, misogyny and also racism, particularly anti-blackness. Everything in the United States is rooted in that. But besides the fact that women are socialized to be more empathetic, and are, people are more comfortable talking to women. Women are going to think about the details, like flower arrangements and stuff, and know how important that stuff is. And some dude in a suit with like a cold face. Like I remember when we were burying my dad, I was like, mm, okay, well, this is the most um, transactional business thing I've ever been a part of. People who work at the morgue, it's all about relationships, and women have been socialized to be better at that. I say socialized because they are not, we are not inherently better. Assuming that we are, let's men off the hook. There's no reason for them to change if it's just, we're just better. No, we're taught to be better. We're socialized to be better at it because we have to be better at it for survival too because society would not function without all of our emotional labor, which men are perfectly capable of doing. They just don't want to. And it's been a really great career for women who already have careers in counseling, social work, event planning. How is it that weddings are planned by women so often, but funerals, we leave men to do that. Men who grape dead bodies and who don't know how to talk to people in one of their most challenging moments in life. 10% of the time is spent with de deceased and 90% with grieving family and loved ones. Well, why? This actually used to be work done by women. Once they realize this is a business and you can make money off of it, of course, just like you know, um, midwifery and all that other stuff. Of course, white men took it over. In fact, during the Victoria era, they wouldn't let anyone but women deal with women and children. And now I'm starting to wonder if we should go back to that. I mean, come on. They purposely were like, don't do this women in these funeral magazines. In another article, they had three reasons why women are better at this. And funeral homes are starting to prefer women. One, all the stuff I already said, empathy, blah, 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 attention to detail, handling things with care, more comfortable with grieving families and giving comfort. Social reasons too. The history of men's relationship with dead bodies. Predominantly violations done by men to non-male bodies. Shocker. And then of course, there's cases of men graping. A lot of, a lot of cases. And that's where I found out about this dude. This guy in Ohio. Look how they framed this. Having schmegs. A hundred corpses. The only reason they caught this dude is because there was an actual unaliving case of a different dude. A different dude unalived this woman. This dude right here admitted to unaliving her but said he did not grape her because he couldn't get it up. Oh my god. The jury thought he was lying. So they accused him of grape and um taking her head off. I, like my heartbeat is racing right now y'all. I forget how hard it is to even read this stuff. I'm so sorry. But DNA showed that it wasn't the dude who unalived her that the, that the semen was found inside of her. It was this other dude. Four, hour, four hours after her body. This is a an 18 year old wo woman, almost 19, a teenager. Four hours after she was so brutalized, almost graped by her unaliver. Four hours later, she is graped by the dude who worked at the hospital. This dude went on to get, plead guilty to doing it to other women. I want you to pay attention to how many times they say have sex, have schmack. And the thing that's infuriating is that the wife had reported it. The wife had tried to rat him out. I swear every time there's like a serial unaliving with pew pews, the wife or some girlfriend or some woman has usually reported that man to the police or some authorities. And they're like, yeah, 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 whatever. She said that he would come home smelling, uh, she smelled schmegs and she also smelled booze on him. And that was in a different article. Reported it to the coroner's office. His supervisors were aware that he had a drinking problem, that he'd been have, having schmegs, graping. They knew it, they knew it. His bosses. Then I accidentally came across another one. This one's in the UK. Same situation. 101 women and girls between the ages of nine and 100. This dude was already serving life sentences for schmegsly motivated unalivings of a 25 year old and a 20 year old. And then they uncovered all of this. And again, senior bosses were said to have been aware of the problem as early as 2008. Lack of curiosity in addition to all this other stuff is one reason why these men just do whatever. No one ever questions them. Or men don't at least. He was constantly working outside of his uh, contracted hours, undertaking tasks he shouldn't have been, and no one ever questioned him. Ooh, 
God. This dude's victims included nurses, teachers, wives, mothers. Some were still wearing their defibrillator and catheter. One of them was a 92-year-old Second World War hero. This dude, right here. At home, they found 900,000 files of him abusing corpses. He had files at work. Named this. Don't even get me started on doctors. 